are ready. Electoral Office of Jamaica says electronic voter identification system ready to be used in upcoming by-election. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News on air and online at onespotmedia.com. I'm Dara Smith. Also this evening, dengue worries. Health authorities concerned about new dengue fever cases in St. Catherine. No more squatting. Prime Minister announces new measures to address informal settlements. And the Senate passes bill for changes to Justices of the Peace Act. There's also sports, sports commentary and weather in this newscast. So stay with us. The news in detail right after this break. Well, welcome back to Primetime News and a special welcome to viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. The deadly mosquito-borne disease, dengue fever, has resurfaced in St. Catherine, with at least 30 persons being infected since the start of the year. That declaration was made at a recent public health and sanitation meeting in St. Spanish Town, St. Catherine. TVJ's Kalisha Williams reports. Mosquito-borne diseases and St. Catherine, the two almost synonymous for some. This is because mosquito-borne diseases like dengue fever and Zika virus have been a nuisance in sections of St. Catherine for some time now, with recent island-wide outbreaks starting in areas like Portmore. The condition has been made worse by torrential rainfall, which saw an increase in the mosquito population. The St. Catherine Public Health Department says since the start of the year, at least 30 people have contracted dengue fever. Councillor for the Geisel Division, Leroy Dunn, is worried. Not many places out of lower St. Catherine, meaning Portmore and Spanish Town, have had um, vector control activities. Um, carried out. So I have my question is, this increased number of cases, where are they? Where are they reported? In addressing councillors at a recent St. Catherine public health meeting, representative from the St. Catherine Health Department, Denise Henry Douglas, confirmed that the increase in dengue cases in the parish has forced the health department to take quick action. As you know, with our very limited resources, we do try our best to um, reach out to all the communities for adult societal activities. But with the recent uh, dengue fever cases, we have to intervene. Right? And a part of that intervention is that we would go into those communities after receiving the report to do adult societal activities three consecutive nights. With these actions, she says, the situation is being controlled. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. To an ongoing sewer situation which continues to cause headaches for the residents of Torspen in St. Catherine. Councillor for the Spanish Town Division, Kenesha Allen, has expressed concern about the health hazard posed from raw sewage, which has been flowing into canals throughout the community. Speaking at a recent public health and sanitation meeting in St. Catherine, she said the sewage which has been flowing from the Torspen sewer plant for quite some time poses a health concern, especially for children who frequent the canals for recreational purposes being filtered into the canal did the representative mention the evidence or the channel in which the feces were detected one was it coming directly from the community like for example from a sewer it is a situation which the acting public chief public health inspector for St. Catherine, Grayson Hutchinson, found disturbing. He said he has already contacted the National Water Commission NWC about the issue. The president, Mr. Mark Barnett, uh, informed us that the Horizon Park sewage treatment plant is scheduled to be uh, upgraded and improved. The sewage from Torspen um, will actually uh, be diverted to Horizon Park sewage treatment plant. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has declared that the National Housing Trust, NHD, will be reshaping in order to address the number of informal settlements across the island. He was speaking at Friday's handing over ceremony of the estuary housing scheme in Friendship St. James. At the end of the day, the only way to prevent and genuinely enforce on someone who decides that, boy, I may want a house and the market not provided me a house, so I'm going to go and find a piece of land and put up something. The only way to solve that 
is when you have your housing market working in such a way that it is providing housing solutions to meet all the demand price points in the market in a timely and efficient manner. The Prime Minister says the review has been completed and a report has been presented to him which will be reviewed at the next Cabinet meeting after which the findings will be debated in Parliament. When you drive through Jamaica, you see so many unplanned communities. It makes the place look chaka chaka. People don't want to live in chaka chaka circumstances. But our systems have not been so well developed to support a formal process of home ownership. The Montego Bay Transport Center in St. James is to undergo major upgrading works starting within the next two months. Transport Minister Mike Henry, who was speaking to transport operators in the town on Friday, said between 30 to $40 million is expected to be spent on the upgrade. What drives me is trying to connect this piece by piece into this multimodal concept of transport. I wouldn't call this a transport center because... It doesn't need everything. He says Jamaica's transportation problem is deeply rooted in the social issues affecting the country. We have moved from articulated buses, which is three side buses joined together. We have moved to smaller buses. We closed the railway down because in closing the railway down, you took the time out of travel. And you gave back to the people the highest cost of travel, which is a taxi. And we haven't defined what is a taxi. Because what we're using as a taxi is, an, is a deported car from some other country. We tell the people you must wear a seatbelt, but you can't hold the five people and make our money off taxes if the seat belt, and make the seatbelt in the back seat work. All of these are the social infrastructure situations which has to be addressed. Mr. Henry says he will be meeting with the various transportation groups across the island to discuss issue in the sector. If Jamaica analyzes its position, we'll recognize that only 25% of the population own cars. Therefore, 75% of the people have to rely on public transport to get them in a connective element, to get them to a point in time for work. And if we don't deliver them in point of time for work, where they have traveled in some comfort and safety, then they can't be productive. Amid the state of emergency in St. James, neighboring parishes like St. Elizabeth are still on edge as the police comb those parishes for suspected fugitives from St. James. The latest operation was carried out in Donegal, St. Elizabeth today. It's understood that the police have been in the area searching for wanted men since yesterday. The announced security presence in the parish is stirring anger among some residents who say the police have not been granting entertainment permits. Come here, sir. Right, uh, go party anytime, hours a night. I'm all in a community, always happy and see one of few boys doing a normal patrol through the community. But now, since I'm um, afraid of them community come into hours, I feel that we get scared. In the meantime, Assistant Commissioner Clifford Chambers says the cops are searching for St. James' wanted gang leader Nico Samuels, who is suspected to be in St. Elizabeth. ACP Chambers pointed out that members of the gang who have fled St. James following the state of emergency were engaged in a fierce gun battle with the police in Donegal District earlier today. He warned that persons caught harboring the fugitives will be prosecuted. Director of Elections, Arit Fisher, says the voter identification system is ready for the March 5 by-election in Northwest St. Andrew. The Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, did a simulation, a simulation at the Pembrokeall High School today, and from all indications, it seems all went well. Here's TVJ's Kirk Wright with the story. All the signs and instructions posted all around the Pembrokeall High School in St. Andrew on Saturday made it look like voting was actually taking place inside. The police presence topped it off. But all of that was simply a test for the real thing. The by-election on March 5 between the Jamaica Labour Party newcomer Nigel Clark and Keisha Hales representing the People's National Party. 
the director of elections, Orit Fisher, says, while the system is not new to Jamaica, the test today was necessary. We thought it necessary to allow the electors within the constituency to get a chance to see how the system works and to familiarize themselves with it. It also allows the workers to get a chance to you know, get some practice prior to election day. Mr. Fisher says although the test went well, they continue to fine-tune what's needed for the election. We are definitely on track in terms of preparations for the elections. We have recruited and trained all the workers that we need. We are just now looking to finalize the, those aspects of training. We have also recruited the polling station security assistants and they are also being trained. We have conducted training with the indoor agents, the technicians are on board. We are basically where we would expect to be at this time. The potential voters who participated in the test gave positive reviews. I think the simulation is important because not only does it cement um, the election day workers' knowledge of the use of the system, but it also allows the electors to know what to expect on election day and how to proceed from there. I think it has been improving because I, it has been tried already and it was not been successful. But coming here today and doing it, it was more faster and efficient. Mr. Fisher says the aim though is for Jamaica to start using the electronic voter system in all elections. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. Justices of the Peace who charge a fee for services under the Justice of the Peace Act will soon find themselves in trouble with the law as the Senate has amended the act to make this and other breaches illegal. The bill, which was presented by government Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, was supported by both sides and passed during Friday's sitting. Here's TVJ's Herman Green with the details. The Justices of the Peace Bill 2018 was presented to establish legislation governing how JPs should operate as well as the selection, discipline and regulation of persons appointed to that office. While there was a code of conduct for JPs, Leader of Government Business Kamina Johnson-Smith noted that there was no legislation addressing how JPs who are involved in criminal activities should be dealt with. Can you imagine, Mr. President, that a JP could be charged for fraud or even convicted and still be allowed to retain his seat? Clearly, this deficit in law must be arrested immediately. The bill, which was approved in the House of Representatives last year after being piloted by Justice Minister Delroy Chuck, also sought to address some common complaints from the public. There's also the issue of whether it is proper for a JP to charge a fee for his services in office. It, it has long been known that this should not be the case. It will now be entrenched in law. I don't know if it is Understand, guide it. If it's something that is within the remit to do, to stay that specific quote unquote working hours, if you accept the job, I know you're not supposed to lock, up, lock a person at 10 p.m. unless it's dire emergency, but at 2 o'clock, you say you don't work on a Friday, for example. But you're the only JP. What does that youngster do that has that form to sign or that photograph? There's nothing in the code that speaks to that, but it certainly is something of concern and should probably be. Now that you have raised it, it should so be something that's included in the training and the, you know, the, the engagement with justices prior to their appointment and when they meet to do their regular up, updating and upgrading. Um, that it is expected or desirous that they are available when the community needs them within, of course, within reason. In addition to those matters, the bill will also lower the minimum age requirement to become a justice of the peace from 25 years to 23 years and move the upper limit from 70 years to as long as the person is still capable of performing the prescribed role. The Senate also passed the renaming of the Courts of Petty Sessions Bill, which will see Petty Sessions Courts being renamed Lay Magistrates Courts. Herman Green, TVJ News. And that's the end of the local segment of Primetime News. International stories are up to the break.